I have received hundreds and hundreds of phone calls from complete strangers asking me how to fight the abuses of their utility companies. I've spent many hundreds of hours with these people, helping them with strategies to protect their rights, their privacy, their health and safety against the radiation emitting surveillance device fire hazard meters that utility companies are installing on people's property without consent, without disclosure, and in violation of not one or two, but a boatload of state and federal laws dealing with trespass, public endangerment, intimidation, fraud, and extortion not to mention wrongful denial of utility service to people who have done nothing but request a safe and lawful utility meter. What they call advanced utility meters have a lot of different features, functions, and technical characteristics, but I can simplify that for you right now. You may want to make some notes on this and check your electric utility meter after you see this video. I will tell you the difference between a safe and lawful meter and an unsafe and unlawful meter. A safe and lawful meter is referred to as an electromechanical meter with no digital components. An unsafe and unlawful meter is referred to as an electronic meter. The term smart meter is just a brand name for a particular electronic meter and using that term just causes confusion. Your utility company will lie to you and tell you that you do not have a smart meter when they have given you the same exact thing by another name. Always use the term electronic meter when referring to the current style of utility meters. Nearly every new meter currently being installed by the electric utility industry is an unsafe and unlawful electronic utility meter. You may find that hard to believe. Let me tell you what makes that an absolutely true statement. Every electrical grid is subject to surges from time to time. A surge means that your incoming electric service, which is regulated to 240 volts, is slammed with 10 or 20,000 volts. This could happen in a storm with downed power lines, lightning strikes, by errors in routine grid maintenance, or by any damage for any reason to the electric grid infrastructure. And if that's not bad enough, electronic meters also have various internal components, which often cause fires regardless of any voltage surges or external causes. To say that electronic utility meters are not suited for their intended purpose is an understatement. When that 10,000 volt surge hits your house, the only thing preventing a fire, destruction of your electric appliances, and possible electrocution of the occupants in your home is the surge protector in your electric meter. Electronic utility meters, these new computerized meters they call advanced meters, the new meters they insist on installing on your home, do not have surge protectors. The traditional standard electromechanical meters did have surge protectors. The new meters do not. And they have put that highly hazardous meter right on your house without telling you that and without getting your consent. So why would they remove the surge protector from utility meters, and how did they think they would get away with that? Lots of reasons. First, in every electronic meter, they have decided to put a data recorder, a computer processor, data storage device, data transmitter, and a transformer to power all those electronics. That system is for collecting and transferring surveillance data on your personal activities in your home all day long, every day. That is the data gold mine that your utility company expects to double their revenue with. All those electric devices take up space and something had to go. So they took out the surge protector. The reason they took out the surge protector is that all those electronic devices cannot withstand 10,000 volt surges anyway, when they are that close to the surge. So a surge protector is pretty much useless when you put sensitive electronics of any kind in the utility meter. They simply plan to let your meter burn up when there's a surge and then replace the meter after you replace your damaged service panel and maybe your burned down house at your expense, of course. There have been hundreds of thousands of utility meter fires since electronic meters have been introduced. Before that, 
with the old meters that had surge protectors, utility meter fires were essentially non-existent, unheard of. Generally, when there is a meter fire, utility companies come and remove the evidence. They simply take the remains of the burned up meter away and tell the fire inspector to blame the fire on your house wiring so that you will be financially liable for all the damages. Of course, the fire hazard is only one of three main reasons that your electronic utility meter is unsafe and unlawful. To transmit the surveillance data, the meter emits powerful pulsed radio frequencies, which are cancer-causing poison to anyone within 50 feet. And about 15% of the population is sensitive to those frequencies and gets sick on contact. And of course, the surveillance devices in the meter are collecting the data telling your power company and the rest of the world and those crazy hackers out there when you were at home, what you were doing, how many people are doing it, what room you were in, and when nobody is home and whether your alarm system is turned on, etc., etc. They can identify specific appliances and they can construct a highly accurate record of your lifestyle and living habits with time and date when you exercise those habits, and they are doing that even when they lie to you and tell you they are not doing that. If they were not doing that, they would not be so determined to install the surveillance device on your home. So the term I use to describe an electronic utility meter is a radiation-emitting surveillance device fire hazard. All of those things are unsafe and unlawful. All of those things endanger you and your family and tenants. And when your utility company puts that on your property without your consent, that represents several crimes in violation of your health, safety, and property rights. For the last five years, I have personally helped thousands of people fight unsafe and unlawful metering. That is not my profession. I've done that simply because they have seen some of my YouTube videos and they have found my phone number. To my amazement, when utility companies are confronted with complaints or refusals of unsafe and unlawful metering, their response is to accuse the customer of being a troublemaker and to do everything possible to harass, intimidate, and humiliate the customer for being so brazen as to request a safe and lawful utility meter. They even go so far as to terminate utility service to people for nothing more than raising objections to the harm and hazards of the electronic meter. If you raise these issues with your utility company, I can pretty much promise you that the company will not be reasonable with you. They will not offer you a surge protector. They will not offer to stop spying on you. They will not even offer to shut off the transmitter without charging you an extortion fee for refusing to be harmed. But it's even worse than that. If you have enough money to sue the utility company, the judge in the court will probably have invested a substantial portion of his pension fund in utilities. And the utility company will have told that judge how important it is to rule against all those nutcases who think the meters are harmful. Whatever the reason may be, judges these days seem to have a bad habit of ruling against anyone who does not have a big pile of money and a staff of clever lawyers. So what is the solution? I highly recommend that you do what I did. Go off grid. Get solar power, wind power, maybe both if you're in a cooler climate. And call your power company and tell them to drop your service and don't bother sending you any more bills. Tell them they can take their electronic meter and give it to someone else. Yes, going off-grid is a big step. It does require an investment. But self-sufficient off-grid power is probably in most people's future sooner or later unless utility companies learn how to behave. And that investment, if you do it right, brings returns to you in lower energy costs and a higher resale value of your home. If anyone in your home is electromagnetic sensitive, you may have no real option but to go off grid. If you take extra care with how you build your power system, you will never need to worry about the sensitivity problems again. 
The reason I know that utility companies will never be reasonable is that I have seen the determination with which power companies abuse their customers with harmful metering, ridiculous arbitrary rate increases, and bullying attitudes where no matter what is wrong, it is the customer's fault and the customer must pay. Go off grid. Maybe not today, maybe not this year, but make it your plan sometime down the line to free yourself of the dependence of on-grid power and utilities as soon as it is feasible. In the meantime, be ready to get politically active and scream like a maniac if anybody tries to tax or regulate your power on your property. Neither government nor the utility industry will like becoming irrelevant. And we can expect some more bullying and extortion as they watch us disappear over the horizon. Using grid power is supporting burning of fossil fuels, generating nuclear waste, and running wires all over creation for no reason whatsoever. This is not 1920. We can make our own power. We need to do that if we don't want to be gouged, abused, and invaded by monopolies which are protected and enforced by government. I am not recommending calling that full-service solar company and paying top dollar for solar while they try to talk you into a grid-tie system. For a solar or wind power system to be affordable, you have to learn up a little and be your own contractor. There are some potential pitfalls the first time you put together your self-sufficient power system, but nowadays that seems to be the only way to have peace of mind, protect your earnings, protect yourself and your family from abusive, harmful, and hazardous utility company policies. I have gone off grid. I'm glad I did, and I'm happy to share some key information with you on a voluntary donation basis so that you can make a smooth and painless transition. Contact me at the website freedomtaker.com. I'm sure I can offer some guidance in your off-grid plans and save you from making some expensive mistakes. One thing I know for sure after trying for over five years to help people get service, satisfaction, and fairness from utility companies, it looks like, sadly, that is not going to happen. The poor decisions that the utility industry is making are forcing every one of us to seek alternatives to their services. It now looks like the only power company left that will respect your health, safety, privacy, and rights is the power company you own and you operate yourself.